We have Bernice and Kimberly, and we have a multimedia experience to present to you celebrating women warriors. Havade. That's right. Hi. Havade, Doc. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very, for having very, us. Very wonderful theme here. Mm -hmm. Bernice, always good to see you. So please detail exactly how we're defining women warriors and what relevance this has to, to our community. Okay, so the actual title of the project is Guam Women Warriors. So we're obviously focusing on service women and women veterans um, from Guam, right? Um, most of whom that live here. Some have lived, moved away since we started the project. Those who have served in the military? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Or in the Guard, we define it broadly. Right? Okay. Yes. So um, we um, started an oral history project with a grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities under an initiative entitled Standing Together, which really wanted to explore through the humanities, women's ex well, wartime experiences and military service, not just for women, but for all service women and men, as well as veterans. Mm -hmm. So it's a chance to celebrate local women here, appreciate what yeah. they've done and, you know. Yes, so for our project, we focused on women. Mm -hmm. um, we did, I don't know if you remember the Sandalu exhibition mm -hmm. that looked at tomorrow experiences right. in the military. So from that, we had interviewed uh, four women that were part of the project, Sandalu exhibit project, and we thought this would be a real opportunity through this initiative to expand um, our focus and efforts in working with service women and women veterans. Mm -hmm. So uh, we conceptualized and designed an oral history project. And the key about the project is that it's peer-to-peer -peer based. So we actually worked with um, Laurel Monag, a humanities scholar, who's done a lot of work and research in Guam, um, to conduct oral history projects with service women and women veterans so that they could conduct their own oral histories, collect oral histories from other women in service. Mm -hmm. And it's really an empowering process. Now, so. as I understand it, Bernice, um, you guys actually let me look at it, like a little sneak peek here of this flyer. There's also a film that goes along with this, correct? Uh, yes, uh, there is. It's called Journey to Normal. Uh, and we're very lucky. We're going to have the director of the documentary uh, here with us tomorrow. Uh, and the film is about eight women who um, uh, uh, it starts with them uh, serving in Afghanistan and then uh, follows them on their journeys home to their families uh, for two years after their service. And I guess what Kim was just uh, referring to is there, there's been research and the spotlight very deservedly put upon women in the region as well who have served. Yes, actually we're focused specifically on women in Guam, mm -hmm. but that could include women from other islands of Micronesia that live in Guam and are, are now serving. Um, and they enlist and then they, yes. they nobly serve our country and yes. they, def they defend liberty. And the, yeah, yes. so one mm -hmm. thing that's interesting, like uh, how Bernice was just saying, the director's going to be here. I was just looking at the credits right now, you know, like I'm a big film guy. Executive producer, it's kind of like way, uh, the way bottom, oh, there's uh, Theodore and somebody named Troy Palomalu who is going to be in the NFL Hall of Fame in probably just a few short months oh, and wow. everything. I know, I know, you know, kind of caught the two of you by surprise, <laughs> but I was like, well, very well done. A lifelong Pittsburgh Steeler, and he was like executive producer. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, well, she actually, is from, Julie Hare is from Pittsburgh, so it kind of makes sense. Okay. Yeah, so that's probably the connect in some way. All right, very, yeah. very, very cool. So um, what, what is this film, uh, how, what will people take away from it? Uh, they're um, going to get a closer look at not only the uh, experience of deployment, but also uh, the experience of reintegration. What it's like to move from uh, uh, the experience of war to domestic life. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's complex uh, and it has um, its, it, its challenges and its um, uh, intense love that comes mm. with that. Um, and it's, it's very moving to see, mm. just so people move through that experience and to relate that to our project here, uh, where we are following women, uh, their stories from when they enter military service mm -hmm. through active duty and deployment and to coming home. Now I am intently, Kim, interested in seeing this film and what it presents because you know we, we live in kind of this outrage culture right now and everybody, mm -hmm. you know, wants to fight for rights and they want equality and, and that's right. fine and mm -hmm. diversity. Um, but a lot of people say we have to normalize like most things and you have to say, you know, the experiences, you know, across mm -hmm. gender. But I mean, you must admit that, that the female experience when serving in the military and like Bernice was just saying, reintegration into civilian life and mm -hmm. you know, the things that you go through while being deployed, mm -hmm. it is really its own yes, set it of is. experiences that are completely unique to the female gender. Yes, it is. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons we wanted to do this project. I think it's been successful is that it's a 
through doing the peer-to-peer -peer based interviews, it's really been a really empowering experience for these women to share their accounts of deployment, military life, and then what it's like to come home and to re-enter a civilian population. So it can really be a, an empowering experience to recount that, but also in a very comfortable and safe space as well. Mm -hmm. So and it, and it's, it's a challenge. I mean, it's a real challenge. And I think you'll, you'll see some of that when you get onto the website once we launch it and look at their exp experiences and their accounts. Mm -hmm. And of course, there have been so many women across generations on Guam who have done the very noble task of enlisting in the US military and serving. So this isn't just going to be, OK, well, we've got five women. We're doing their profiles. Oh, Let's no. move on to the next thing. This is an ever-evolving project. Yes, right? it is. And you yes. want to share, Vivi, um, yes. uh, Bernice, who we heard from? Yes, we, um, we're we very, very happy about that. Um, we are going to be adding new uh, posts every Wednesday, uh, extending these women's stories. And we oh, also wow. want to uh, invite other uh, service members and veterans mm -hmm. to, if they'd like their um, oral history recorded um, and shared through our website, we would love that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's going to be part of the launch. Oh, very um, nice. Okay, and how can people contact you if they would like to contribute or like more information? Yeah, well, they can get on the website once it's launched. Of course, they can contact myself, Kimberly, at um, Humanities Guahan, um, either on our website um, where you'll find our addresses or at our phone number, 472-4460 or 61. Okay, what is the website, just so people know right now? We want to make sure they bookmark it. Uh, www.humanitiesguahan.org. Excellent. So, ladies, thank you so much. Thank you thank for you. having us. And, and we, we thank you for allowing us to say thank you to these wonderful, brave, incredible